All right, welcome back to another Roblox programming tutorial. And so far, you guys are doing really, really well. Um, if you haven't already, make sure that you please check out our Roblox basics tutorial as well as scripting basics. Um, we also did some videos on looping and conditional statements. Um, it's very important that we understand the concepts behind those and how those work. Um, if you have any questions, please always consult us. Um, again, you know, we're always open to answer any questions that you guys have. But the next thing I'd like to talk about is the idea of what is a function. A function is a way to store multiple lines of code to be reused continuously. And number one, the reason why you would want to do this instead of copying and pasting is again because of the dry principle. But on top of that, um, it's also just very, very effective and very, very efficient. And you can call functions into action to run. And it's a great way to just have code organized and have code run so it's effective to use and reuse. So let's go ahead and look at an example of a function. So in this case here, I have a script here parented to a part. And I'm going to go ahead and create a variable here, local p. This could also be part. Again, variables can be named whatever you want. And I'm going to assign that to the script parent. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a local function. Now inside of this function here, I can essentially assign things and declare things however I want. Now there's a very important concept here known as scope. Um, scope is these locals here. Local is uh, essentially defines when a part or when a variable or when a function can be used and you also need to name functions too so we'll call this uh, parts so um, for example let's say I went ahead and declared this inside of this function here when I try and print P outside of the function it's not gonna know what I'm talking about because P is locally declared so it will only work inside of this function here Right, but if I go ahead and get rid of this local here and just make it P, it's now global and P is now rec recognized throughout the entire script. The problem with this is now if you want to assign P later to like seven, it's going to be very weird because you had it assigned to a part. So now if you try to do like, I don't know, P dot anchored. Lou is gonna have no idea what you're talking about. It's, uh, it's like a number is anchored. What do you what do you mean, right? So that's the difference between global and local, and that's called scope in programming. And you can also do that with functions as well. So function part in this case would be global, and in this instance it would be local. Now it's often a good habit just to go ahead and make things local in scope because uh, you never know when you'll reuse something later. And unless you 100% want it to be global for whatever reason, most of the time it's very, very wise just to make things local as a good programming practice. So let's go ahead and look at an example function here. Let's go ahead and say I want this function to make a part disappear. Right? What I would do is I would look at the properties of a part. So let's look over here. Well, if I wanted to make a part disappear, I wouldn't want to be able to collide with it, right? Because if I was able to collide with it, then I would know it was there, right? It would just be invisible, but it wouldn't disappear. I would also want to make sure that it's anchored so that way it just doesn't fall out of the sky. And I would want to make sure that we couldn't see it. So it'd be 100% transparent, right? So let's go ahead and manipulate those properties. Up here, I'm going to set the anchor to true. And then inside my function here, I'm going to go ahead and set the transparency of the part to 100% or fully transparent and set the can collide of the part to false. Now, when I run or when I call this function to run, by typing in the function's name, which was specified right here, you can type that in. It's going to go ahead and run this for this part right here. Notice when I run, that part has now disappeared from the game model. It's still there as an object, but I've manipulated its part properties to make it disappear. And you can define various things to happen inside of functions. 
and you can reuse functions multiple times in a script. So let's say I wanted to wait three, then I wanted to disappear, right? This works well. I can reuse this over and over again as many times as I want. And it's very, very, very useful in that regard, right? Now, with functions, there's also this concept of a parameter inside of a function, right? A parameter in a, in a function is an inbuilt variable in the function to be used when that function is called. Now, that might sound like a lot of jargon, and you're probably looking at me like, what in the world is he talking about? Let's look at an example, okay? Let's go ahead and say I'm gonna create a function here to add, right? And let's say I wanna add two numbers together. Let's say those numbers are seven and seven, right? And I wanted to print this addition. You know, actually let's do it. Let's say ANS equals seven plus seven, print ANS. And let's make this local. Okay, oops, can't type. All right, so I have a local ANS is seven, seven plus seven, right? And then I'm gonna go ahead and call add to run. And when I run, it's gonna go ahead and print 14. Nothing surprising there, that's kind of what we expected. But let's say I wanna reuse this again later, right? But now, instead of it adding these two numbers, I wanted to add two different numbers. In order to do that, I would have to create a whole nother function and I would have to come here and I would have to do like add, you know, number two, and then I would have to make 10, and I would have to do 10, right? And this is very tedious. We don't want to get in the habit of doing this. This is not very good programming practice. So to avoid that issue, you can embed variables to be used in your function and then assign those variable values when the function is called. I'm going to say that one more time because I want it to be very clear you can create parameters or variables to be used in the function, then assign those variable values when the function is called. Let's look at an example. Let's say now I want the answer of the addition here to be num1 and num2. I can now type in num1 and num2 and notice Lua instantly recognizes what I am talking about. I am talking about the variables that I assigned here. Now, when I call the function, I assign the variable values here. So num1 and num2 are assigned here. So if I want those two numbers to be seven, they can be seven. If I want those two numbers to be, you know, 25 and 25, I assign that here. If I want those two numbers to be, you know, 50 and 100, I can assign that here. And let's go ahead and do a nice little wait here of a second between these so we can see these prints correctly, right? And lo and behold, I've assigned the variable value of these to be used in the function when the function is called. And that is the idea of a parameter. And these right here are the parameters for the function add. Let's go ahead and run it here. I have 14, 50, and 150 prints here. And it makes this function reusable because I'm assigning no variable values here. I'm assigning them only when the function is called. So that's a nice lowdown on the idea of functions. Um, again, we'll go ahead and create a a video talking all about the dry principle, but function and calling functions. And right here, this is a function call. Any of these right here are known as function calls. It's when you type in the name of the function and you ask it to run. These are all great examples of dry programming. And we'll look at why that's so important later on, but dry, just in case you're unaware, it means don't repeat yourself. So that's just the basic ideas behind functions and the basic concept behind scopes as well. Also how to use functions and use parameters inside of functions. So again, if you ever have any questions, you can always shoot us an email or shoot us a DM or ask us if you are taking a class with us and I will see you in the next video.